recording. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us and welcome to our theme session for the 2021-2022 school year. We're going to talk about the NHD theme, which is debate and diplomacy. And we will um, try to cover that from a few different angles to help you understand and use the annual theme with your students. So attendees, be aware we are recording this session. Please keep yourself muted, but also please unmute and speak up. There are a lot of opportunities for collaboration and brainstorming together and your participation will make this richer for everyone. Um, if you are attending live tonight, you will receive relicensure points for this training. We will track all of the attendance over the course of our series this fall and um, send you relicensure points for the things that you can join us for the live Zoom. But everybody who registers for trainings will get a classroom kit in the mail. And we've got really cool t-shirts for you and some uh, the theme book and some other cool stuff. So our theme for National History Day 2022 is debate and diplomacy in history, successes, failures, consequences. Why does NHD have an annual theme? The reason is not to direct student research, research into certain areas. That's not the reason we have an annual theme. The reason really is to help students find more ways to think about the topics that they do choose. So the annual theme really <clears throat> offers them a lens to help them analyze their topic in a more complex way and help them take a step or maybe two or three beyond just narrating a report or um, like writing an annotated timeline. We really wanna help them to be critical thinkers and bring analysis to their projects. And the theme really can help them do that. So there are six components in this theme, debate, diplomacy, in history, successes, failures, and consequences. Do students need to talk about all six of those components in their project? They don't, but they do need to discuss at least one component from each of these bullet points. And they need to be able to relate these to, their, to the topic that they are working on. So they need to be able to tell us, was this topic, do you see a debate? Do you see diplomacy here? Or do you see both? So they have to have at least one, but they, it's also fine if they see both. The next bullet for your topic, was the debate or diplomacy a success, a failure, or were there elements of both? They have to have at least one of those and it's okay if they have both. Next, what were the consequences? Every student needs to address this question. Whether, um, whether there was success or failure, what were the outcomes, short-term and long-term consequences? and in history. So their topics do need to be historical. Even if they're interested in something that's very current and very contemporary, this is a history project. And so they need to be doing historical research. It can relate to that contemporary thing, but the focus of the process, project needs to be in history. Any questions about how to explain uh, the way you can use these six components in kind of an either or way. But you have to talk about debate or diplomacy or both, success or failure or both, consequences and needs to be historical. That makes sense. And remember, I cannot see you. So if I don't hear a comment, I'll move on. All right, so I don't know if you've already checked out um, the resources that NHD has put together so far this summer to support this theme, but I really think that should be your first stop. 
they um, they did a really nice theme introduction video. It's about 12 minutes long, so I will allow you to watch that on your own time, but it, it really is designed to share with your students. And you can get to the theme resources directly at NHD right here. I also have links embedded in the Utah History Day contest or the Utah History Day website that will bring you to this page. And I just wanted to make sure you knew what this looked like and where you could find it. It has um, good, good materials now and they are planning more programs in the next few weeks that they will add onto this page. So the intro video is great. They have put together a walkthrough video for their graphic organizer and you can download the graphic organizer right here. They set it up as a fillable PDF. <clears throat> there is a theme webinar still to come that they will post here. And then this, what is diplomacy presentation is really pretty terrific. Uh, I'm gonna draw on it kind of heavily in my presentation tonight. And then they also have, um, they also did some summer programming in June that supports the theme. And then you can download the big theme book here from this page as a PDF. I, I'm sending you a hard copy of that in your classroom kit as well. So there's just loads of resources to help you work with this theme. And I wanted to make sure that you knew where and how easy they are to get to. So let's talk a little bit about these two core ideas of the theme, debate and diplomacy. I think we need to start whatever age kids you're working with, whatever level they're at, it's really important to start with some basic definitions. What do we mean by debate and diplomacy? So a debate, this is a discussion where people argue different points of view about something. Now, debates can take place in speeches, in writings, in video, through action, and, and all sorts of other ways. They can happen in formal and informal settings. So if you have, you know, um, middle and high school students who think of a debate as the thing you do in debate class, where it's very formal, and you know there are rules of how you engage. That's a formal debate setting, <clears throat> but we're not limiting ourselves to formal debates. Um, <clears throat> there are all kinds of debates that happen in informal settings as well. In a debate, there might be two opposing views or there might be many points of views expressed on the topic that's at the center of the debate. And a debate can be a single event it can be a series of conversations or it can be an ongoing dialogue or controversy that lasts for years. So debate is a big concept. It happens in a lot of forums and in a lot of different ways. You know, I think you can think right away of formally debates like presidential debates, congressional debates, um, mock trial maybe, but let's brainstorm together and I encourage you to unmute and contribute your ideas to some informal settings where your students can identify debate happening. I'm turning Town hall. Town halls, right. Great. School board meetings. Yes. School board <laughs> In the news recently, yeah. Uh, public opinion. Court public of, opinion. Okay. Of, uh, public Expand opinion. on that. How? Where do you find public opinion today? So in the media, on social media, protests. Yeah, right. Protests. So um, newspapers, TVs, that kind of media, right? Press kind of media, but also social media. What other kind of debates? Where else would you see it? Sometimes in the classroom, they'll have conversations. Thank you, Lisa. I was hoping <laughs> somebody would bring that up. Don't you think that happens quite a bit in school? Yes, yeah. I do. So that might be a way you can talk about this with, with your students to kind of, I think 
for this theme in general, finding ways early on to shake yourself and themselves free of thinking there's only one kind of debate, right? Right. I, I, I can only do the Lincoln Douglas debates or the Nixon and Kennedy televised mm-hmm. debates, right? And that's all I can choose from. That like move away from that as quickly as you can and help them think about all the different ways that debate happens, you know, in our society. Well, if you took like, um, just thinking out of the box here, like mainstream history versus some of the fringe kind of theories, would that be something we'd want to push them away from? Or is that? <clears throat> tell, tell me more about- Just the debate between historians is what I was thinking about. Like not all historians agree on yeah. what happened. Just, I guess, the debate over what the evidence is saying maybe, you know, or what it's I not like, saying. I like that you're thinking about that. One really great example, well, there are two really great examples. Um, Reconstruction, if you're if that's something that your kids have already, you know, talked about in class, is a great example of how historians interpreted reconstruction one way and then through the years have reassessed and reassessed and reassessed what happened during reconstruction. And then and another really good one, which probably would be easier for a lot of kids, is to think about um, the atomic bombs. Mm-hmm. Right because they're really different historical schools of thought about about the bombings that didn't just grow out of opinions at the time, whether it was a vital necessity that saved American lives um, or a humanitarian disaster, right? And and, And that you can trace that through the historiography too. So I think either of those are good examples. I think it depends. If you're working with middle schoolers who just haven't really talked about those topics much, that might be harder to do. I think historiography is is um, not always easy to grasp, depending on the, the age of the kids you're working with. Okay, let's move on and we'll talk about diplomacy. So what's diplomacy? This is the art and practice of building and maintaining relationships and finding solutions to problems using tact and mutual respect. Um, And I take this from the Museum on American Diplomacy in the presentation that they did with NHD. I like this definition a lot. Um, They really talk about how diplomats find ways to help people work together to solve problems, to protect and promote the interests of both sides. And so it kind of, it does encompass, um, you know, strategic diplomacy and the Cuban Missile Crisis and that kind of thing, but it also, it's it's much more broad um, and it can incorporate lots of cooperative international relationships and humanitarian things and And so it's really, they really emphasize how diplomacy is about kind of creating ongoing relationships that will work for two parties. And and it's a strategy or a practice of how people get what they want, even when it's not easy to come to that agreement. It's very much people oriented. It's about finding common ground. So, you know, and you could add a bullet here. I'll share the slides out afterwards. You know, that once you get to military conflict, where does diplomacy fit in? I think that's another kind of interesting um, thing you could talk about. Does this, is this a helpful definition? Okay. All right, so how do you put these into tension with each other? Because our theme has both and or, right? So I think you can sum it down and say debate hinges on expressing differences. And diplomacy focuses on finding solutions to problems. And so then you really need to ask and have students think about this for their topic. Do all debates involve diplomacy? Is that necessary, a necessary part of debate? And the same question, does all diplomacy involve debate? 
So are you going to find both of these in every topic? What do you think? Just kind of thinking out loud as you think about a lot of topics that your kids might be interested in doing. Do you think you're always going to find, they're always going to find both? Maybe not. I'm thinking of some debates going on now. I'm not sure there'll ever be a diplomacy with them. Right. Um, I don't know. Well, I think uh, they could probably find some, some topics that are narrow enough that they could do one or the other and not have to do both. They, they may be able to do that. And, and I, would, I wouldn't try to push them too hard towards finding a topic that just has, has one element. Really use those theme ideas to help them explore that topic and see what's in there and see if they can see, wow, this act of diplomacy involved a lot of debate because the parties were in really different positions, but they came together and found a solution or maybe they didn't find a solution. So it was failed, right? So it's totally going to depend on the topic that they picked, how debate or diplomacy either are both present or you know it's more predominantly one or the other or they just find one or the other. Right. They'll have to figure that out. Okay, so let's talk about international relations because I think this is the other thing that, you know, some kids are going to totally love doing a topic on international relations. And I think where, you know, presidential debates are the pigeonhole for the debate idea, international relations is kind of the pigeonhole for the diplomacy idea. And that makes sense. So let's talk about that first. This really involves relationships between different nations. It's government to government relationships. The US State Department handles international diplomacy for the, for the United States. And they have a, a massive staff of civil servants, ambassadors, foreign service officer, officers, all kinds of different people that work with and for them out in the world um, working on these relationships with all of these different countries. So they're involved in negotiations, they're involved in um, problem solving, looking for solutions, advocacy, and they work in all kinds of different, um, different, er different arenas. So it's, it's not all just um, you know, defense and politics. There's economic policy, trade, health and human rights, environmental policy, so, so much more. So I really loved the National Museum of American Diplomacy's website. They've built out some really great activities for NHD kids to do to kind of think about um, international diplomacy from a US perspective. And that's a really fun place to go and spend some time at their website. However, international relationships is not the only place that we find diplomacy, right? We're gonna find diplomacy happening at the local level, topics that are centered or issues that are centered within Utah at the regional level. Um, oh gosh, tons of environmental and economic issues that are centered really in the American West as a region and national where um, issues can be centered not just within the United States as a nation, but think about debate and diplomacy um, in Mexico, what, what was happening in Germany before, you know, before World War II, what happened in India as um, British rule ended, South Africa and apartheid. I mean, so, so many examples of a national scope or a national frame where you see, you can see debate and or diplomacy happening in all of these different, um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say locations, but that's the wrong word, but you can see the scale or the scope, right? And so think about, um, it doesn't just have to be government people involved, right? It can be groups, advocacy groups, 
different kinds of groups that organize in, around a community. It can be community-based and you can look at individuals, um, people who are engaging in debate and diplomacy on an individual level, whether they're representing a group or themselves. <clears throat> Can so, you give me an example of yeah. a person, just an individual? Oh yeah. Um, the person I, that comes to my mind is um, Stephen Holbrook. And so he's an individual, he's from Salt Lake City, but you know, his humanitarian and social justice kind of work and policy work, it's not just one group. Like he founded Envision Utah, which does, um, kind of like large scale planning for community community betterment. It's not just about um, like typical urban planning, but it's kind of thinking bigger. He founded a radio station. He did all kinds of different things. Um, so I think that, you know, the debate and diplomacy he's engaged in kind of would grow out of him as a person rather than any one of these activities or groups that he may have been involved in. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. So your task as, a, as an educator, as an NHD teacher, is to help your students find a topic that they're really going to enjoy researching and working on. And this is a very individualized process for every kid. And there is no, we do not assign topics to students. The theme really is meant to be very broad and conceptual so that Whatever kids are interested in, they are probably going to be able to find a way to relate that topic to debate and diplomacy. Not totally, <clears throat> but they should be able to land on something that they will enjoy doing. So, so Wendy, can, can yeah. you can I ask a question real quick? Yep. And maybe you're going to go with this later, but just remind me what the NHG guidelines are about um, history versus current events. Like what you usually give a number for years. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to kind of guide our I students do. away from. So, <clears throat> this is a rule of thumb and it's not a rule in the rule book, but I would guide your students to something that is a minimum of 25 years old. And so if they are really, really interested in Malala Yousafzai or, um, you know, name the contemporary figure who is uh, claiming a lot of news and headlines right now that kids are really interested in or are inspired by maybe Greta Thunberg, somebody like that. The, the way to handle that is to say, awesome. Now let's look at this person and put them in historical context. So if they really wanna write about, if they really love Malala's story and they love her book, wonderful. We are going to direct that research to um, the background to Malala and why she's compelling, right? And it's really going to focus more on um, the conflict over women's role in society, maybe, um, that, that made her a flashpoint kind of thing. Does that help? Yep, perfect. Okay. As I said, it's not a rule in the rule book rule, but it's a really good rule of thumb. I just see with this topic that they would be pushed towards a lot of things they're seeing in the news. Yes. And I, I know that we should kind of nudge them away from that a little bit or. Yeah. So another really great example, which I think will, you know, I'll already toss it in for our history of science brainstorm is vaccines, right? And the debate about, around vaccines. And this is easy for you because you can say, wow, did you know that people have felt ambivalent and uncomfortable or you know, thrilled and supportive about vaccines since the very first vaccine was ever developed. And, and you just send them back to a different vaccine and they research that history. And then it, they can talk about the current de contemporary debate you know, in their outcomes section, but that's not the focus of their project. And they will get so much more out of that anyway, right? All right, so we've talked a lot about traditional kinds of debate and diplomacy topics. And I think, you know, those are, the, those are the easy ones. Let's brainstorm together some great topics for debate and diplomacy in these other um, 
areas of history. So let's start with social justice. This is so, this is gonna be easy. There are gonna be hundreds of topics that relate to social justice issues that they can work on with this, this, this theme. Um, child labor. Yeah, excellent. So Lewis Hine. Mm -hmm. um, immigration. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and so many different examples of debates over immigration, um, Irish immigration, the Bracero program, I mean, Asian immigration to the Pacific coast, lots and lots of things. You wouldn't want a kid, a student to do all of those and just do immigration. You'd focus on one, I think, but yeah, yeah good one. I think even women's right to vote. Yes. Be, we could do that. Um, just voting rights in general would be a good one because you could right. take that to the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you can take voting rights back to reconstruction too and the reconstruction amendments. Yep. Yeah. Almost anything social justice will fit with this theme, I would think. Right. You know, whatever their interests are, um, whether it's, you know, Cesar Chavez and the and Dolores Huerta, the grape strikes, just mm -hmm. like pick, pick, pick the issue. If the Korematsu case would be a terrific mm -hmm. one. So just so many options there mm -hmm. and, and they will not have a hard time finding debate and diplomacy. Okay, let's. Let's talk about history of science because you're going to have, this is one of our biggest fields of interest, science, technology, and medicine topics. So we, we hit it off with vaccines. What else? Nuclear. Um, yes. Nuclear war, nuclear energy, right? Um, Chernobyl. Um, Three Mile Island. Mm -hmm. The Manhattan Project, for sure. Even with all of the secrecy, I think man the Manhattan Project would be really interesting for this. Mm -hmm. um, the Downwinders. Mm -hmm. Let's try to think about uh, technologies. Um, I'm thinking about the Glow Girls. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, the, yeah, that. Radium. The radium. The radium Girls. The Radium Girls. And a lot of kids are able to read that book and get a lot out of it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Um, there was a lot of debate over, I don't know, with x-rays and... Oh, yeah. That would be so interesting. Mm -hmm. What about genetic research? Um, oh, or eugenics. Food. What about eugenics? Yeah, eugenics. Oh, that would be so great. Please, somebody do eugenics. No. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, those are the kinds of topics that just really mm -hmm. inform students at, because they can see, oh my goodness. There's even something that came to mind is thinking about um, when television was first introduced and radio was wondering whether it was going to have a ground, to, a leg to stand on. Same yeah. idea with social media and um, former things that we still use, but former forms of communication. I agree. I think, I think that's, um, that could be really fascinating. E any of those turning points from radio to TV, from TV to cable, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, and debate over what should be allowed on television. Yes. Uh, what about debate over advertising on television yeah or children's programming 
funny. They don't let them advertise liquor, but they let them swear. And it used to be you can advertise <laughs> liquor, but you couldn't swear. It's like, not yeah. sure which is worse. But yeah. anyway. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just I think um, kids, some kids are going to find that really fascinating to, to dig into. All right, let's shift and talk about environmental history. Glen Canyon. Absolutely. Are, do you think about it every time they show it on the news, how low the water is? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And water rights too. I mean, you could go back to the beginning of when um, uh, the dam, the larger dam, Lake Mead, that dam yes. <laughs> was being built <laughs> and the water rights that were being fought there. And the consequences are we're still dealing with those water rights. Absolutely. You can, Absolutely. A, a con, another consequence, sorry, would be Great Salt Lake and how it's having trouble right now, mm -hmm. but that goes back to water rights for agriculture. Yes, right. I mean, water policy in the West, there are so many different cases that, that students could explore. Echo Park Dam, it's really well documented, that controversy. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, like bear's ears? I don't know if that's old enough. Bear's ears might be too recent. Yeah. But Grand um, Staircase may not be. Yeah, what about Grand National Staircase. National parks. National parks in general. Yeah, in Utah in particular. Um, it's really interesting to look at how um, how some national parks were created by um, kind of pushing inhabitants out, whether they were indigenous, indigenous communities or sometimes there were small other communities that kind of had to be, um, they either kept their property as in holdings or, or they were kind of defined out of the park. So there are interesting ideas there. What about like, grazing, grazing on public lands. There's been a lot of debate about that. All right, you guys are on it for environmental topics. That's really cool. How about um, arts, music, culture, ideas, those kinds of topics. There are some kids that are really gonna, gonna love to work on kind of fine arts and popular culture. Elvis Presley. <laughs> that's that's my softball there. Just rock and roll in general. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think if you have dancers, there are some really interesting, um, you know, real debates within the dance worlds, uh, kind of between classical and more modern forms of dance and kind of a highbrow, lowbrow um, debate, you know. Yeah, that could go to music as well. Yes, it could. Very much, yeah. So you know, you may you may have those kids that play violin and and whatnot, and that might really be interesting for them. What about the? Um, oh, I can't even think the um, art, artifacts taken from yes. countries. Right. I mean, yeah, archaeological pilfering and theft and looting which happens here in Utah as well. And we have a great team of archeologists who do a lot of work in that area. So if you have students who wanna work on that, be sure to connect with me. And so I can, I can connect them to an archeologist. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I, would, there, I would think that there's 
some type of diplomacy with between the Native Americans and um, uh, the the early inhabitants, uh, European inhabitants, to decide uh, land rights and all that other kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if you have students who are interested in Native history, there are lots and lots of options. Um, and they can, I mean, certainly they can focus on treaties, treaty diplomacy, treaty rights, uh, the fact that ev pretty much every single treaty with the United States was broken. Yeah. Um, certainly. That would be that failed diplomacy piece. Yeah, right, right. And then they need to talk about the consequences for mm -hmm. native people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I think too, I mean, I'll just say this, I, native history can be really tricky for kids to get their heads around. And what a couple of the reasons are that virtually all of the primary sources that they will be working with are written by the the government or by yeah. white people in the community. And so they really you really need to help kids to see the biases that are in those sources. Mm -hmm. And then also um, to make sure that they are looking at native voices as well. And so for most native communities, you know, the primary sources are gonna be in the oral tradition because that is how the history is handed down. And it has to be handed down. Like you have to tell the story word for word the same way every time it becomes kind of a living document. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you have kids who are gonna take on a native history project, I just learned the hard way, they will need guidance from you. <laughs> they will need it. Okay. <clears throat> it seems like, I know from my perspective, it seems so obvious, but the sources that they're gonna be reading are just so racist <laughs> and, and so, um, I mean, they just reflect the biases of, you know, a Christian civilized world mm -hmm. in, in, in so many ways that it can be really difficult for kids to kind of get their minds around that and then take a step back and, and really try to do the multiple perspectives. Plus there was violence, you know, and it's difficult for kids to think about that pioneer mythology as something that is one perspective. So if you've got students who you think can kind of get there, wonderful, but you should be ready to provide some. some That's a guidance. tough one, yeah. It's hard. Um, I, I was curious about like ancient history. Is mm -hmm. there a way to bring in the debate and diplomacy um, through for some of that? So I know hardly anything about world history, <coughs> but I do think that what I do know about um, the materials that are available from the Mongol empire, I think you could probably find enough there. Okay. <clears throat> and, and I would have to toss this to somebody who actually teaches world history because I just, it's not my field. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I was just curious. I, I'm going to ask whoever I can. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so. Okay, let's talk about sports. You know, you are probably going to have some students who just cannot get into these other kinds of topics, but sports might do it for them. And you really want the topic to engage them enough that they will have curiosity through the process, right? Mm -hmm. And there are some such great debate and diplomacy topics that center around sports. You can, you can jump right from the Olympic games mm -hmm. um, and you can talk about the Berlin Olympics. You can talk about, um, you can talk about Jim Thorpe. You, there are just so many examples. You can talk about the first woman who ran in a marathon, um, even though she wasn't allowed to register. I, they're just lots and lots of really rich topics. So don't write off a sports topic because you think it isn't gonna be good history. It can be really good history. Title IX in yeah. general was oh, one yeah. that came to mind for me. Title IX is a good one. Mm -hmm. Concussions in the NFL. 
Yes. Now, is that too close? I don't know. I, I have seen a couple of projects on that recently. I'd, I think the research is old enough. Like, I okay. think they were, they were tracking this. You could look at uh, Muhammad Ali as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's also interesting if you have somebody who's really interested in football, maybe looking at the, the origins of football in the US and the ideas and debates that surrounded kind of using a very masculine sport like this um, and kind of the social role that it could play in mm, developing masculine qualities, but in kind of a contained space. It's so fascinating. I wonder about, I don't know what the, I don't know, debate and I mean, like, I guess it's too new. I'm just thinking like Michael Jordan and all of his um, apparel, mm -hmm. but all of it being manufactured in China, but that's pretty current. What about Lance Armstrong? Oh. That might be old enough. Yeah. Or, I mean, you know, doping in, in general. In, in general, I'm thinking about you. I, I'm gonna and assume you guys are all uh, um, not, well, well I definitely remember watching the science. Olympics, right? The doping watching. could fall under science because it used totally to be good. okay. Yeah. You know, you like know, watching I'm, all of those big athletes from the USSR and from yeah. um, the communist countries where this was like, this was how you won could be really, really interesting. Well, and even the, the steroids in football. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, when they didn't realize it was killing them all. Um, yeah. Just making them big. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I, this was a great debate or a great topic brainstorm about debate. Um, I think as you're working with your kids, just keep coming back if they are casting around for ideas. Cause you know, most students, unless, unless they've really loved their history classes or they really are kind of history, history nerds and play the video games and all of that most of them are going to come in and be like, I just can't think of anything because they don't have a fund of knowledge to draw on. Right. And so you really do need to start with that question. What do you care about? What are you interested in? What are you passionate about? And that's where you start because you can find a topic that will be awesome, but you do really kind of need to start with where they are. Mm -hmm. oh. How long does it, I've never done this before. How long does it normally take for the kids to narrow in on a topic? Lisa or Brian, do you want to speak to that? I think Brian had to jump off. But, oh, did he? Um, boy, some of them will come up with something in five minutes and some of them three weeks later, they're still changing their mind. Oh. So um, it's kind of one of those. They just, sometimes they'll just look at you like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And, um, sometimes they'll think they like something, then they'll start looking into it and they're just not clicking. Yeah. And then you're like, you were supposed to have this turned in three weeks ago. What are you <laughs> going to do? And so it can be frustrating. Yeah. But, so uh, Lisa's a librarian and one great idea um, is if you can work with your librarian and just see if you can go to the library and have a book tasting one day where your librarian just puts out a whole lot of books on the tables and they can just kind of browse. I think that that is a really nice way to do it and it gets them off Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I bet I could bring a bunch of books in from our local library and just do it in my classroom. Yeah, you could do that. You could. You could. And just picture books, just picture books of, yeah, you know. Oh, really? Real, a great little overview. Picture books will get them hooked faster because, okay. it, you know, you've got photos and you've got just snippets of what's happening and then they can dig deeper later. Okay. But the picture books is really what I'm focusing on right now about trying to gather up. And I'm in a high school right now. 
but I want to get a lot of picture books for our district that I can share with teachers as they're trying to come up with, with topic ideas. So are these picture books that have stories or are these picture books that are nonfiction? Um, these are tip nonfiction. Okay. I would say these would be nonfiction picture books. Yeah. Okay. Like think about the bobblehead books and things like uh -huh. that. Yeah. Bobblehead. <laughs> Yeah, like who was Mark Twain? Who was? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, those the who was and who is. <laughs> yeah, okay. Who is Malala? I'm like, the bobblehead books. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I, I've I've seen them for ten years or 12, 15 years, and I started to go bobblehead. Oh, those with the big head on the front. That I makes it, sense, like that. though. Yes, they totally do. <laughs> they totally took me a minute. Took me a yeah. minute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, and. Oh, I'm going to skip ahead and then come back. So <coughs> since we're talking about getting them towards topic ideas and getting beyond just like the name of a topic, like the Sagebrush Rebellion, who even knows what that was? Very few people. Um, so we actually developed a new topic idea list this year. And um, my assistant coordinator put this together it's a, it's a spreadsheet. I shared it out to the teacher list already and I'll, I'll share it with you guys again um, in, in case you didn't get that email. But we have topic ideas that are Utah history, US history and world history. And it's not meant to be every topic you could ever do, but it is meant to give them a little information about the topic what even is the Sagebrush Rebellion? When did it happen? And then a link or maybe two links to where they can just click and, and see a little bit more or they can go right to a really good source. Okay, so that's something new that we had developed this year. Right now, it's just been sent by email, but we will be incorporating it into our Padlets. We're just getting those finished up. So you'll have that to share with them as well. Okay. Now, right sizing their topics, because again, kids that really don't have a big fund of knowledge about history are gonna have struggle with like how narrow their topic needs to be to work for a history day project. And so starting with that general interest, <laughs> whether it's native history, whether it's World War II, Oh my goodness, you're gonna have a lot who are like, World War II, you can't do the whole war, the, the whole war, right? Yeah. So then I would filter that general interest through the theme topics and, and, and with World War II, you're gonna to have to narrow it before that even and just say, okay, are we talking about the Pacific? Are we talking about the Holocaust? Are we talking about the war in Europe, in Africa? Or are we talking about the home front in the United States? Like at least get them there. And then use those theme concepts to help narrow the topic more. And then all of this really should end up pointing them down towards what they will eventually write as a thesis statement, which will show kind of how they see the debate and diplomacy theme embodied in the topic that they've chosen. Okay. And you will get this slide so that you can use it with your kids. Okay, so here's just a last rundown of the go-to resources that are available now. <clears throat> I'll try to share out when NHD does more um, content on the theme, but you can always find all of their theme content on that page that I showed you. Okay. <clears throat> and then, um, the topic list is gonna be on our website for NHD Utah. We are building some new Padlets that you'll be able to easily access all of our mini materials. And those will go up, I am hoping this week, but I'll let everybody know. Um, and then there was also a webinar on building a more perfect union that NHD did. They've also got some terrific resources on World War I, on women, women's history, and then the, um, National Museum of American Diplomacy set up some simulations for NHD kids to, to work through. And those are really fun. So there's lots out there. Um, and I'm also available to bounce ideas off of. 
any time. So that's what I have to share about the theme. Are there things that are still lingering for you that I didn't cover or that you're wondering about? Um, I am wondering about the, the setup of uh, like regional and then um, where it goes from there, that sort of thing. Cause my, I'm the only one in my school that is doing the National History Day, so. Okay. <coughs> when, and I, I, I think we should connect you with some other teachers in your district who are doing it. So you can okay. get some local mentoring too, or just, you know, like have a friend. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I can be that friend as well. I'm gonna talk about that in detail in the next half, or in the oh, next okay. hour, if so you I'll are stay you on there. stay on. Yeah. I'll okay, and then we'll put that in that recording. Anything more about the theme? Okay. I don't think so. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That yeah, was thank you. Joining. That was lovely. I appreciate <laughs> every little bit. <laughs> oh, the theme. It's, it's, it's happening. It's yes, happening. it is. Yeah. So you've done it for four years, right? Is that what you said? five years, six years? I think I've done it about six. Okay. And the first year I was just sort of a spectator. I sort of just followed people around. It was my first year in Ogden. And then, then um, after that, I kind of, I became the like district coordinator and worked with actually, I well, one year with one teacher, um, we did it and I still wasn't fully immersed. I guess that was my first year. But then after that, we had our entire, every junior teacher that taught US history, they all did it. So wow. we all sort of jumped in with, with both feet and that was great. And then- So, so how long does it, you, do you usually give them from start to finish? Um, well, it depends. If you're willing to go all in, you can do it in a month. We did that with one oh. teacher. I would not suggest that. No. It's, it's all in. It's like, mm -hmm. she was, she taught AP language and they had to do it. She just, all she did said was, that month they were studying war, so they just had to put war in the theme some or in the in the title somehow. It had to be something about war, and we were all hands on deck helping this this class of AP language kids get through it. Now they were smart enough that they did it, and some of yeah. them did a great job. But I would not suggest that. Honest, I usually it's usually second quarter. I have one teacher that spends the entire second quarter, um, pretty much every class. He may have a few little things in the beginning of class, but the rest of it, the whole class, all second quarter is working on history day. Okay. And sometimes that's not enough time. <laughs> okay. If they would okay. show up, it's better. If you have kids, like if you're in elementary, they tend to show up more than high schoolers. Okay. Yeah. So all right. thank you. Six, eight, 10 weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would, I would, yeah, I would, I would discourage the one month plan. Yeah. It's, no, I'm not doing it in one month. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, it, it was, doesn't it give was... them time to process and think. Yes. And they, they need that. They need well, that. Yeah. And, and they need a lot of support as far as they've never so done a full research. To, yeah. And there's so many different ways to present that do when they do have all the research, then they need time. If they're going to do a, a performance, they need to learn their, you know, write their mm -hmm. script and mm -hmm. do the performance. And I think of the video and the kids that, you know, they, they start working on the video and then they don't realize how long it takes to put a video together yeah. forever. So um, they do need, they need a lot of time on the front and then, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. No, it's fun, it's good. Well, <laughs> it, is. it is. The thing is, is they get so much out of it. Like yes. the ones who get, even if they get a little bit invested, they will really take a lot yes. away. And so yeah. it kind of, you have to keep your eye on what they're gaining. Right. right. Yeah. It's a lot. It's important. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm going to yeah. stop this recording and let anybody who wants